All right, it's another day, so there's another video, as promised, to myself and to you, by me, for me, and for you. So I really didn't know where I was going to take this video today, and I'm still not really sure what's going to come out of my mouth when I open it. It's been a little bit of a problem for me in the past, however, I've learned to filter through some thoughts and maybe only pick the ones that are <laughs> beneficial. I know if some of you remember me from years ago, I kind of just opened my mouth and said whatever I felt like saying, and I didn't care, and I really didn't, or maybe I did, but I put on this big front that I didn't care, because I figured if everybody was just going to call me a bitch, then I might as well wear the suit that went along with it. I spent a lot of years being told who I was pretty much based on my behavior, and the reason why I was such a bitch mainly was because I was hurting. I had a lot of things that were hurting inside of me, and I was living in a household with parents and family that didn't understand me and just thought I was weird. I was always bored. I always thought that something was going to be so great and fantastic, and then when I would actually go to whatever it is that, let's say a kid's birthday party I was going to, I would imagine this birthday party being like the best thing ever, and then I'd go to this birthday party, and it would totally suck. And for years, I didn't understand what was wrong with me. Like, for years, and my mom would say, like, Angela, how was it? And I would be like, mm, it was okay. I just didn't, I didn't realize that my imagination was so vast that reality wasn't meeting its expectations. So I was never living fully in my present moment. But as a kid, I didn't even understand any of that. And then when I got older, one day it just sort of hit me that... My imagination is a great place to live. And even if when I get to what it was I thought and imagined going to, if it's not fun, I had a hell of a time living in my imagination. Like the other day, I was so excited. I was getting pizza. I knew that I was, I could just go out. I was gonna walk right over, get this pizza. And I was just on fire, man. I was, you would have thought I was going to Disney World and I was a five-year-old, okay? I was like lit running around the apartment, like loving life. Got the pizza. Got a different size than I normally get. Don't do that, okay? When you like the pizza, the size is really important because when they change the size, it changes the pizza. Lesson learned. Pizza wasn't that great in the moment, but I thought, whatever. I loved the moment leading up to it. So, that being said, again, as a kid, I didn't really understand. I just thought, I lived in a world of depression and sadness and I would lay down at night and I would think about all the things that I was afraid of happening. I would think about everybody that I went to school with thinking bad things about me. I would recap the day. I'd think about the future and I would just lose hours and hours of myself just in thought land and those thoughts just built even more anxieties and no offense to my parents but they didn't really know what was going on. We didn't really understand energies or vibes, and we didn't talk like that. It was, what are you crying about? What's wrong? It's not a big deal. Put on your big girl shoes, Angela, and walk it off. So I built this big, I built this, I, I built this city. I built this person or this image of myself. I was really good at keeping most people at arm's distance because you weren't going to get too close. I, I, I was very good at that. I was also very good at self-sabotage. That was one of my many gifts and talents. Bravo. Bravo, Angela. And uh, my worst critic. Yeah. If it couldn't be done and I thought it couldn't be done, it wasn't getting done and I wasn't going to do it. Nope. No thanks. Check off. I was the best person at procrastinating. I was the number one procrastinator. If I was going to give myself an award for procrastination, I would probably never get it because I, I would literally procrastinate on giving myself the award. So that's how that works out. As I started to move into my later 20s, I started to realize that a lot of the story I was telling about myself wasn't even true. And most of the personality that I had created wasn't even needed anymore. And yeah, I know some of you who are watching, some of what I say may not make sense yet, but it will eventually. Or it might be past your level of consciousness and you may be further along on your journey. I think a lot more than I put on the videos because I don't want to use too much of my own vocabulary and confuse people. 
But as I continue to go, I will start to let a little bit more of my freak flag fly, and my weirdness will start to show. And I'm okay with that. I'm just, I'm putting my toes into the pool slowly before I just jump right in, because I want to get some of you's attention, and I want to, to understand that addiction is a thing you can overcover, over, overcome, overcover. Making mistakes. Yeah, that's not a real thing. I mean, it is for our society, like, oh, you made a mistake. No, 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 no. There really aren't mistakes. It's just you're perceiving it as such. I could literally go from, like, 2008 to 2015 and just, like, write it all off as mistakes. But it, 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 it was a learning experience. It was a growth process. I had a, I had a lot of progress. If you do anything, know that there, everything in life is a process. You, yourself, you're a process. It's, like I have said one day, I was trying to teach a six-year-old a few years ago back about the process of doing something, and she just couldn't grasp it. And I chalk the moment up to like, oh, she's a little kid, she doesn't get it, but I really didn't get it. I really didn't understand that life is a pro, everything. I mean, even swallowing your food, there's a process. Like you have to chew your food first before you swallow it. Like, Okay, granted, I know, there's, I have a skeptic in my head that's like, well, do you? What if it was a shake? It's like, all right, the gray area, again, I'm saying most of the time you have to chew your food before you eat it, okay? If you want to get on an airplane, you got to book a flight, or you have a private jet, whatever. I'm saying in the gray area of life, steps have to be taken in order to get to wherever it is that you're trying to go. And I think that it's in those steps and in that process of getting to where we want to go, to becoming the me that I really loved, to letting go is the real growth. It's, it's the experience. Like, it wasn't always the best feeling of becoming this version of me. And I know if you've known me from the past, and some of you probably still hold true to the beliefs and thoughts you have about me, and that's okay. My job isn't to sit here and sway you from your opinion. It's just to sit here and be honest that I was kind of a little shit. And that's okay too. I was going through things, and that was my own internal thing and my process and this personality that I built to either keep people away or let only certain people in. I love who, I've, who I am becoming. I'm, I'm, the moment that I stopped actually trying to become anyone other than who I was and I accepted myself fully for all of it, for my child past traumas, for my ignorance to certain things, for my attitude that can sometimes seem presumptuous, I just love myself for all of it for the fact that I swear and some people don't like it. It might change someday, it might not, but I'm not going to change parts of who I am to make other people comfortable. I'm not going to deliberately make people uncomfortable, but they're just words. And if I'm not using them to directly attack or hurt and my intention is solely just because I like to say shit and I like to say the F word, I might not say it right now because I, I just not, it's not feeling like I want the word to come out. Uh, it doesn't make me any less of a person. It doesn't make me any more or any less of anyone. I believe that we all have greatness inside of us. And I've stopped looking at people with judgment in my mind. And I've just seen like, ooh, she needs a hug. Or, ooh, ooh, mm -hmm. yep, there's sadness like lingering around somewhere in there. And that's, 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 that's just being a human. That's gonna, it's gonna happen. We're gonna have moments in our life. And we're going to, I don't want to say necessarily attract, but people are going to come into our life that are reflecting what it is that we feel inside of us. So if you're feeling absolute love and joy and proud of yourself, well, you'll probably attract somebody into your life and have a nice, healthy relationship because that person too feels very happy with themselves, very proud of themselves. I noticed that as I've moved further on in my life, I have eliminated a lot of the people, not to be a bitch, but I've eliminated, eliminated a lot of the people in my life that didn't make me resonate or feel good. And it was just an, I just outgrew people. Like I outgrew myself and that's okay. It's okay to let some people go out of your life. I remember back however many years ago, I had an addiction, you know, I was looking for something outside of myself to cure this aching, incessant process of feelings and thoughts. And I just didn't know what was going on. I just, I wanted it all to stop. But then I remembered feeling so numb and I wasn't feeling anything that I felt even more sad. 
I missed the goosebumps that music would give me. And to me, that was something bigger always communicating to me. And I didn't have that. And I remember being like, I can't do this anymore. I missed that feeling. And that for me was my reason why I wanted to be sober because even though it meant that I was going to have to feel the bad feelings, I was all for it because I missed feeling the good ones. And I really wanted that connection back. And that's why I decided that I needed to actually find what I was looking for, not at the bottom of a, like a bottom of a glass, not in the bottom of a pill bottle, not at the end of a line. It wasn't where I was going to find it. It was just, it was in me the entire time. But I had to sit and monitor a lot of the beliefs that I had because people in society had gotten into my head and told me like, oh, you can't do that, or oh, you're not smart enough, or oh, you don't have enough money for that, or you're not tall enough for that. <laughs> okay, okay, watch me now. <laughs> watch what I can do. My son tried to tell me earlier that I couldn't, I said, I, I want a vacuum. I said, let's get a vacuum. A vacuum's coming in the mail. And he was like, no, it's not. And I was like, what? He's like, I was like, a vacuum's coming in the mail. And he's like, yeah, you gotta buy it. And I was like, now he had just, now he had just took something out of me. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not buying the vacuum cash. It's just gonna show up in the mail. And about, I don't even know, five minutes later, I get a text message saying, hey, this, this, and this is coming in the mail. And I was like, oh my God, someone sent me a vacuum. And I literally, I was just, I wasn't even surprised because I felt that on a very, like, like when he tested me on that, I was like, yeah, it is. It's coming in the mail. Like I didn't even, I was completely certain that a vacuum was coming in the mail without doubt. So he was wrong, but I love it. I love when people question what I'm capable of. Cause then I'm like, oh, I'm going to show you. And I like that. It's not necessarily an ego thing. It's, it's that I'm proud that I know that I have this inner being in me that can do and create anything that it really wants as long as it's in alignment. So with closing in this video, so we're hitting that mark again. I just wanted to say that you have inside of yourself the ability to create and let go of some of the personality that doesn't serve you anymore. And if you want to start with loving anyone or getting love from anyone, love yourself and start with that. I know it sounds so simple. We say it all the time. Love yourself. Love yourself. I'm serious. The best thing that you can do in this life is make sure to put yourself first, your needs, love yourself, like hug yourself. But just make sure that you're caring enough for yourself and your body and your mindset and that you're not trying to run from things. And if you are, again, like I said, I'm here. You can message me. I am still going forward with the conversation on March 10th at 7 p.m. So for anyone who wants to be there, anyone who wants to join a conversation and just let yourself listen or be heard or just, I don't know, you can do whatever you want when you sign on. Just please message me because I'm so looking forward to connecting and to being able to have a conversation that doesn't involve anything other than the intent of just connecting. So again, enjoy the journey. And you will see me all soon. My son is here. He promised me that he wasn't going to come. He promised me he'd give me 10 minutes, not that he knows what 10 minutes is, to let me record. I even gave him strawberries before this recording. And he's standing here, sure enough, right in front of me, persistent as ever. I don't know whether to be, like, mad or impressed, but I know that mad doesn't make me feel good. So I'm going to go with impressed. That uh, even though he knew there was, like, just like, that. can I have the 10 minutes and I didn't get it? Gonna let it ride. You leave me alone. I'll be back soon.